Howdy guys, it's the day I've been waiting for. TAS just called and one Bravo Charlie is ready for pickup from her extensive annual. They just test flew the airplane and everything's good to go. They said come pick it up. So I talked to my buddy John with the Cessna 340. He said he'd give me a ride. So let's go pick one Bravo Charlie up. What do you think? Oh, you like the camera, huh? You gonna make the video? There we go. Everybody likes the doggy camera kisses. Hey Pearl, did you show Kevin your new food dish? Did you show Kevin your new food dish? How do you get your food? What do you do when you're hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Time information November 1552 Zulu. Wind 1409er, visibility 10, sky clear. Temperature 5, dew point minus 9er. Altimeter 3054. Arnav runway 15 approach in use. Notice airman runway 1836 closed. Advise on initial contact, you have information November. Aurora ground, twin Cessna 6827 Lima Sky Haven with November. Request taxi VFR departure to the southeast, and uh, we know we have an IFR on flight plan. We're going to go VFR. Roger, number 27 Lima, runway 15, taxi via Alpha Bravo, cross runway 18, hold short runway 15. Alpha Bravo, cross 18, short of 15, taxi to 15, 27 Lima. What's the winds right now? Wind 1709 or gust 15. You want to go to 15 or request 27? Let's take 27. And can 27 Lima have 27 by chance? Number 27 Lima, runway 27, taxi via Alpha, say again, your direction of flight. 27 via Alpha, and we're going to go to the southeast VFR, and we'll hold short, let tower know when we're ready after the run-up. Roger, and um, I know you're departing VFR, but do you want me to remove the IFR flight plan or leave it in there? No, you can go ahead and remove it. Thank you much, sir. No problem. Aurora Tower, Twin Cessna 6827, lane by holding short of 27, ready to go. That thing powered up, or do you need power? Uh, no, I powered up. It's got 76%. Twin Cessna 27, Lima, left turn southeast is approved. Runway 27, clear for takeoff. Wind 1706, gust 15. Left turn southeast approved, 27, clear for takeoff. Thanks. Aurora Tower, oh, 3500, we're clear until we get south of the Bravo. Stay with me, Alpha, Roger, I have your request. Clear all around. All right. Stiff left crosswind. Eight, Romeo Alpha, runway 15, clear to land. Gages are good. Clear to land, runway Airspeed's alive. 80. 90. And rotate. Tap the brakes, gear coming up. Eyes ready to climb. Nice out. Beautiful day for this. Yeah. Approach to Cessna 6827 Lima, uh, about six southeast of Aurora at 3,500, looking for flight following, and we're going to Delta, Foxtrot, India, in Ohio, Cessna 340. Number 6827 Lima, squawk 5145, Ident. 5145, Ident, 27 Lima. Number 6827 Lima, radar contact, five miles southeast of the Aurora Airport, maintain VFR outside the Bravo airspace, and uh, the Midway Class Charlie airspace. Resume our navigation, up near 3054. 27 Lima, copies all, we'll stay at 3.5. We're heading towards Chicago Heights and direct, and if at any point you can give us a Bravo clearance, our cruise altitude is 7.5. Roger, you can make your request to the next controller, contact them now, 126.0, uh, actually make it 119.35, 1935. 1935, 27 Lima, we'll see you. See ya. Approach Twin Cessna 6827 Lima is with you, 3.5, direct Chicago Heights, or cruise altitude 7,500. If we could get a Bravo clearance, it'd be great. November 6827 Lima, Chicago, Roger. For now, you're clear to the O'Hare Class Bravo airspace, climb and maintain 4,500, and uh, I'll get you higher here in just a few moments. Clear to the Bravo, going up to 4,500, 27 Lima, go dogs. 
<laughs> My buddy Eric, he was uh, controller down at down at Atlanta approach. He's a dog fan. Nice. November 27 Lima, climb and maintain 7,500. 27 Lima up to 7,500, thanks. Look at Santos. Dan Santos. came with us. And uh, since the last time I think we filmed and flew in 27 Lima, she's got new carpet, new sidewalls, new uh, headliner. John is getting her all, getting her all spiffy. I'm dialing up. Yeah. So John and I both thought we bought decent twin Cessnas <laughs> and we'll uh, <laughs> modernize them, upgrade, and you know maybe we'll have a few years before anything big turns up. And his has a pretty paint job. He's done some of, you know, all the interior except for the seats, but when did your first engine issue? How long did you have the plane? Uh, that was over the Atlantic Ocean. I think I had, I don't know, 50 or 75 hours on it. And uh, the right engine, uh, well, it starter adapter blew up, pumped all 12 quarts of oil overboard over the Atlantic Ocean. Sorry, fish. <laughs> that was engine number one. We got to land in actual at about 400 feet. And uh, engine number two was slightly after that because it was making metal. The cam sh shaft and lifters weren't getting along anymore. And uh, so it got two new engines, two new props, uh, all hoses, engine mounts, exhaust. Exhaust wasn't cheap. Um, Lots of surprises. If there's any wood to knock on, knock on wood. But since you've done all that, you oh, have a pretty man, high dispatch that. rate, oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been pretty good. So I I had my plane for four years now, and I've done basically four different shops. Some of which say they know Twin Cessna as well. And that when I took it to TAS, that's all they work on. It's all they know, and they've been doing it for decades. And they found some really alarming stuff with my plane. Uh, corrosion in the nose that had been missed. Uh, cracks in my landing gear and wing skins that had been missed. And I don't think I showed you. I got pictures, and I'll have to put some up here. My nose gear collapse was imminent. They, there's a bolt oh, no. that in the nose gear that's U-shaped out. And they found it disassembling it all and putting it back together. 27 Lima, contact approach 127 Good dog. See ya. 2787, go dogs. Approach twin Cessna 6827, Lima's with the leveling 7500. Good afternoon, November 6827, Lima, the midway altimeter is 3054. Howdy, 3054, 27 Lima. So, uh, nose wheel collapse imminent. Yeah, it was, uh, it was. So that, that, that's something that could have totaled your plane. You'd oh, collapse yeah. nose gear and both two props new strike, two new engines, uh, new props, that would be. Oh, it would have been, it would have been terrible. Man, basically, if somebody tells me they want to buy a twin Cessna, I thought about starting off and rehabbing it the way I wanted. John decided to do some rehab. If I had it to do over, I'd say find a plane that was maintained at a twin Cessna, especially shop like TAS, and it's been maintained there. And it, it'll cost you more initially, but you're probably going to have a lot less gremlins to deal with. So I actually, Dan's brother, uh, bought a 421 recently, and that was my advice, was call TAS, find out if any of their customers have a 421 for sale, and buy that one. Uh, because it's so easy to hit 100 grand on these things. You got, yeah, the engines on this plane, I mean, realistically, Ram overhaul engines, 60 grand a side. Um, yeah, you know, that comes with turbos, of course, but now uh, we have exhaust ADs. That's another seven grand. Props are 20 grand a side. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, now so. if you get into uh, avionics, you know, autopilot, 50, 60K, avionics, you can easily spend 100, $150,000 on. Uh, I was telling John, TAS does something really unique as well. They, they test fly your airplane, and it's... That's just part of how they do business. It's mandatory. You bring your plane in for annual, they're going to test fly it to make sure all the systems. These are very complex airplanes with tons of systems. They don't want you going home and then saying, oh, something's wrong. So usually when you have an extensive annual or maintenance like I just had, that first flight, it 
it's kind of scary, you know. You you go over, you pre-flight, you know, you get you get your mind right for all the things that could go wrong. It is kind of nice that one of their super experienced twin Cessna guys with thousands and thousands of hours and all these different types went up and with the test plan profile and went through everything. Can you believe I blew my vacuum pumps again back to back? I saw that. That's crazy. Your sister's hilarious, by the way. Yeah, she's we, funny. We, <laughs> there was like six of us watching, you know, we were having a post-flight meeting and then they were watching that. I'm like, that's the funniest video you ever posted for the back seat, like holding on and doing all that. <laughs> when I did that bank, she just she started crawling up into the other seat. <laughs> Approach to Cessna 6827 Lima, starting a slow VFR descent. Roger that, thank you. Seven Lima radar service terminated. Squawk VFR. Change to advisor frequency of Have a good day. Two seven Lima. We'll see you. Good day. Kettle go. Defiance traffic. Twin Cessna six eight two seven Lima is one seven miles to the west. Inbound for landing. We'll be landing straight in runway one two. Defiance. Deep belt. Shoulder harnesses. Set in the back here. We're set up front. Prop sync. Prop sync up. Cabin differential pressure. Differential pressure is zero. Wing flaps. Wind flaps 20 degrees. Landing 30 gear. Rather. Landing gear down 3 degrees. Mixtures. Mixtures set. Props. Props 2500. That is all. Cisco traffic time is 278. And we're clear to land. So used to setting everything up for an ILS and having everything stabilized. Yeah. I just. VFR is off the hip. I'm, <laughs> I'm not good at flying VFR anymore. I'm telling you, it's weird. Like, it's harder for me. Oh, it is, yeah. So, I get it. IFR is so structured, yeah. stabilized, and. The Dagum autopilot will take you to the flare every right. time. Just a different skill. Yeah, it's like a, it's like it's like it's Christmas, and I just walked downstairs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So we keep all of your parts, as many as we can, for show and tell. So you're welcome to take anything that's here. Uh, uh, it all will wind up in the junk, if not, unless it's a core, or unless Tony's decided he wants to keep something. He hasn't indicated he wants to keep any of this, so uh, have at it. So Brett's going to explain kind of what you got going on here with these parts. All right. Okay. So this is your gear bell crank. This is, was the big thing at the end that we found that was was pretty horrible. So well, I was showing you, John, the picture. You would have had a bearing yeah. in here, which pretty much disintegrated into millions of little pieces. I don't even have it anymore. That uh, fell out. Here's your bolt. That was what was holding you together. <laughs> That's what was keeping your nose gear collapsing because what was happening is yeah, this is inside there. Bent, this rolls yeah. up and down with your nose gear attached and it was slamming back and forth like this. So, so that bright shiny spot of that bolt was yeah. being slammed yeah. over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, cool. nose gear collapse in a minute. In a minute. Kinda, yeah. Two new engines, two new props, total of airplane. Absolutely. Yep. Now, it, it didn't yeah. look like it was broken or cracked or anything, but how many more bangs it would have taken to Who go? Knows? Right. Yeah. It would have sheared, yeah. Well, it would have, it would have at some point. And the threads are damaged too, yeah, badly. Absolutely. absolutely. It was uh, uh, difficult to remove. In that so condition. We, we, we were looking at this and Tony and I determined that your rod was a little bent and then the bearing would just fall in and out and so we replaced all of this to make sure you're good and safe. Here is, this was your, your stuff that was broke up inside your nose. 
Oh, okay, this is in the This is, was all cracked out. This was all gone here. Um, this is what we worked on. We pulled this out. Then we remember you had all the corrosion up in there. We cleaned all that on the uh, left side of the airplane. And plus, we put a stiffener in there too to keep this. I this just is sent him photos paper of the pretty from the factory. Pictures of how that came yeah. Out. It happens, but I mean, this was exceptionally bad. See, this is an attempt at a repair that somebody else had done. So, because it was cracked there too. Obviously, you recognize your strobe boxes. Just replace with LEDs. That would have been in the back. Yeah. And um, the beacon. Some lights and other miscellaneous. More miscellaneous lights to replace this LEDs. Here is your, this is your motor mount. Mm. As you can it's see. Still a little bit of a slant to it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's right. tired. And it's this is tired. where you can see that it was going off the tower, the mount that holds it to the engine. This was sliding off. Oh wow. So yeah, we, we caught that and there's your mm -hmm. other part as you can see. Not bad. So yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I got the quick, quick discs in here. Those were below minimums. So we replace those. And there's the strobe from your wing tip your box. Don't worry. Those then, were heavy. Yeah. You got your ELT we you replaced. Remember you had that. So oh yeah. That's there. If there is some paperwork. There's a uh, re-registration that needs to happen on the just, ELT. So your paperwork is in the office. Why does the ELT need to be replaced? Was it just not functioning, or is he it? I, I just wanted to put one of the 406. Okay. Because I was thinking, you know, if we're on the way to the Bahamas and, you know, I'm putting in the water, right. I can push that button, they'll know my WASP GPS spot as opposed to this thing, you know. Nice. And being a controller, when they send the cat planes out to find these, I mean, it takes forever to try and relate and get some search and rescue on these yeah. things. And it's like, well, it's winter tell time. You from experience, the 406 ELTs are, are very accurate and the Air Force will call. <laughs> Oh, Any time great. of the day or night, so they will call. This is what was holding your landing gear up, your main gear. So that's what was cracked, and that's why we had to go after that. Yeah, yeah. that's the part. Yeah, that's how it was once we got into it. Yep. Wow. And a lot of this is parts of that. A lot of, stuff that was a lot of man hours in this one. Yeah. This was an odd one. This was your... Um, your uh, pedostatic heat slash, uh, it's a little warm. It ran your heat on static. something on static. And the heated static port. Yeah, that's right, the heated mm -hmm. static port. And he found this bad, this wouldn't hold any amperage, so we ended up replacing this. This was actually a yesterday. very, very end we replaced Ground this zero, <laughs> this caused a lot of stress in our there world. There was a lot of stress going on yeah. over this. So what what caused the dual vacuum failure, failure twice? Let's call it a quadruple vacuum failure. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, description. We had, so. we had several uh, boot issues going on. All at the same time. One switch that Dan found that was blowing up. We think that you were blowing up, you were pushing a pressure head into a pressure head and taking out your pumps. We think what's going on. If that makes any sense to you. Because we haven't had any issues and now we've checked over the system pretty thorough. It all seems to be going where it should be, but it wasn't. You were popping boots up at any given moment that thing doing what it was doing, that bad switch that you were, uh -huh. we found it. Remember, so it would just go out of nowhere? Yeah. We had that going on and, and so it would, what, it what would activate on its own, the boot and plate switch. Yeah. Would, and if you didn't catch it, it was blowing the pumps. Right. Because you have to turn the rest of the valving on for things to work, but that was inflating out of nowhere and causing all kinds of vacuum issues. So we think the pressure had equal. When we do we set up a vacuum system, we have a vacuum side and a pressure side. Okay. They have to match. They have to. We have to set up the pressure side and we have to have the vacuum side at a certain setting too. If that's not going on and one's blowing up and the other's not going down or your vacuum's not right, that that's causes extreme pressure and it'll blow a pump out every time. So that's theories. Drag. It throws redundant systems right in the garbage can when you right. use them both. Well, right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, you got two or three things happening different times. It's not supposed to because see, the valves should have been open and he wasn't hitting the switch to, to tell the valves to open. Right. His other switch was shortened out, causing everything to pop. This is your POH uh, owner's manual slash. This goes back in the airplane. Tony made up a new weight and balance for you, so it's right there on the first page. Woohoo! We lost 60 pounds. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> I lost 60 pounds. That's just... 
<laughs> you're, you're far slimmer in it. Yeah. Um, and sexier now that you're 60 pounds yeah. lighter. He said, this is for your new ELT. This is all the information you need. You need to follow these directions and get it registered. Got it. These are your log books. We'll go ahead and go over your log book entries then. We did also digitize all your log books, so we have a complete digital scheme of your entire log book okay. system. So in the future, do I bring them back with every time, or um, like yeah. what's the purpose? Yeah. You do. So, yeah, we really, but if we lose them, you guys yeah. have copies, because I don't have it, a copy of any of them. Exactly. So we that's have, great. We have a complete digital log book awesome. copy for you. We will um, we will share that if, um, if you would like, so you can have a copy of it as well. So here is the actual entry for your right engine. Okay. This is your left engine. This is, and this bad boy is your is that your Blackstone reports. Okay. Yeah. I should be printing them out, but these are the ones you guys have. I'll I'll print them out and just leave them in here. Mm -hmm. if that probably helps you guys. Right. What's done? a Blackstone report? Oil, Oil analysis. analysis. Okay. If you use them or not, this is, I use the same ones that they use. I've always okay. used the same company, so they have all the trends saved in there. That's great. One of the things that I will say uh, for purposes of this conversation is, when you come here, you have to have your oil changed. Um, if you call, if you come and you say, "I've done it 10 hours ago," it doesn't matter. We changed the oil. We need to see what's in it. We need to specifically on on your model airplanes, you would be wanting to look for your lifter material or anything that might be inside the oil. And so, um, you know, we, we will analysis what comes out of the airplane. Okay, so these are your AD notes. Yeah. So these would be the AD note that, that it is. Okay. And then um, the next reoccurring time. Okay. And you can use this to go ahead and sign it off if you want to. Yeah. Um, and you can just do the dates on down. So, you know, you can flip through here and see oh, all the different nice. ones. I've never had my ADs. Now I can make, make my whiteboard for the hangar. Yeah, those are color coded too. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, here's the strings. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but cockpit capsule will take care of this for you. Cockpit capsule will actually put it up on an app on your phone. You'll be able to see your specific information. The reason then we digitized your logs. We like to do that for our customers. We'll have a digital log copy. That way we can set up their profile for you. You don't have to worry about going through your logbooks and picking all this stuff. So I know, but I'm sure John is wondering what I'm talking about. So can you describe the sure. cockpit capsule? Sure, I'd love John it if Christian, Christian would describe oh, log cockpit Christian. capsule. What? So on camera, John would like to know about yeah. cockpit capsule. So go ahead and give him Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's an automated service. It's a digital maintenance management tool that does maintenance tracking at its core. So. It'll track all of your AD notes, um, IFR certs, anything that's on a time uh, related basis that needs to be tracked, um, it will do that. You have a, you'll have a box in your airplane that's installed a piece of hardware. Okay. Um, it communicates with your, with, uh, with your phone via an app, um, and that, that box is collecting all sorts of data, mm -hmm. particularly your flight data. So it knows how so, long you've flown, it knows how far you've flown, how high, all your flight particulars, if you will. And then it, the system is updating that on a regular basis, so it's always knowing, oh, you flew an hour and a half today, you flew an hour and a half so here, and then it's updating. My so, biggest concerns are the AD compliance, especially yep. with exhaust, because we have on the 340s, there's different stages that we have to yep. A, B, C, D, and... B through G, G being paragraph G being the overhaul yeah. 12, every 12 years. G being the big requirement. So, uh, and that's one that's easy to miss because it's like every 75 hours a visual inspection has got to be done by a mechanic, not yeah. a pilot. Yes, uh, there's a visual inspection that's done that. We do that basically with at every change. every oil change. Right. But we yeah, that's a good one where it comes up all the time and this would alert you to that. As you get close to those, it, yep, it goes from you a and tells you. green status on the bar or an okay status to a like critical, it's like yellow, and then like overrun basically. Is that that's an app you guys developed? Yeah, so it's a it's Great. an app, and, and the best place to actually review stuff is on the port browser based portal. You can find information on the app that'll give you the critical stuff and everything you need. But the the, the majority of the data, um, the most in depth, the most uh, specific data is in the back end portal because you'll also be able to download information from your engine monitor. Uh, so when Kevin upgrades his <laughs> if he does that yeah. um you it'll it'll be connected to that so it'll automatically stream and download all your jpi data and it'll move wow. that too so you're actually getting that all in one place um you start to kind of get a feel from a back-end data sense of what your airplane's health is actually like so that's sort of where it is 
kind of going in the future, but right now it's just particularly trying to keep you compliant with your AD notes, with your IFR sets, with your annual, with your oil changes, and all that kind of stuff. So this all feeds into like our want to, not only when you're here, but when you've left, help you as much as possible. If you're, if you're one of our customers, you're one of our people, like you're, you're a family. A family. You, I mean, Brent is going to call you at Saturday at eight o'clock and make sure you're not dead. You know, <laughs> there's there, we we really the whole idea is everything is about hopefully showing you whether it's the flight training we do or the cockpit capsule unit or the spares box. It's all about trying to make sure that you're dispatch reliable because we grew up our company wide. We grew up as needing to be dispatch dispatch reliable and wanting to make sure we're taking care of our customers as much as we can when we can't physically be. This is all of your yellow tags and um, in 8130s. So, um, you know, you have to keep all of those. I'm trying not to mess up his little fancy thing. But they are all in here. He tries to mark them by hand. I'm not sure if he has gotten to that this time or if he just threw them in the book. Sometimes he'll mark the year by hand. Um, sometimes not. But... This is every uh, certification for every for all the parts that, that we have. Okay. These are your prop logs would be the same. Then then your historical logs in here and the rest of this would be weight and balance data. This would be the actual uh, full size weight and balance should be in here. Yep. Um, so there's that. And these are your 337 forms. So these would have been the major repair and alterations that we accomplished during this particular. Gotcha. Okay, so um, this is your bill. So we can we can talk money whenever you're ready. There's your 60 pounds right there. I'm going to leave you guys alone. Yeah, yeah, this will only take me a second if we, can, if we can have a moment to run through it. 